Hello and welcome to Neurosurgery Written Board Crash Course, and this is part two of the thalamus video. And last time we went over the anterior, medial, and median nuclear groups, and this time we'll cover the rest. Now recall that in the lateral nuclear group over here, you can have a dorsal tier, which is comprised of lateral dorsal, lateral posterior, and pulvinar, as well as a ventral tier the ventral anterior, ventral lateral, and ventral posterior, as well as a metathalamus and the MGN and the LGN. The dorsal tier, lateral dorsal, and lateral posterior nucleus projects to the parietal lobe. And I remember this because the LD and LP nuclear group are located dorsally in the thalamus and they project superiorly to the dorsal portion of the cortex, which is the superior parietal lobule. And this part of the cortex, the superior parietal lobule, is part of the sensory association cortex, and the general parietal occipital temporal association cortex. And an, associ an association cortex is responsible not for processing raw information, but for the assembly of auditory, somatosensory, or visual information into higher level of processing. And the pulvinar is the posterior most nucleus, and it, it travels posteriorly to the cortex that is obviously most posteriorly located which is the occipital lobe. And therefore, the pulvinar is involved in the visual pathway. Pulvinar will receive information from the superior colliculus and transmit that information into the visual cortex. Now, the particular part of the visual cortex that it pulvinar transmits to is the Brodmann area 18 and 19 which is the secondary visual cortex. Now, this is different from the primary visual cortex, which is Brodmann area 17, all listed here. The Brodmann area 18 and 19 are just anterior to the primary visual cortex. And the secondary visual cortex is involved in processing higher order of visual information. And because there is a separate pathway from the primary and secondary visual cortex with the lateral geniculate body going into primary visual cortex area 17 and the pulvinar going into the secondary visual cortex, this pulvinar pathway is considered part of the extra geniculate visual pathway. And we will uh, cover more on the superior colliculus in the brainstem video, and you can find more information about the lateral geniculate body or the visual pathway in the uh, visual pathway video. The rest of the nuclei in the lateral group belongs to another tier group called, I call it the ventral tier, but other people call it the lateral tier. Regardless, the, the, these are all relay nuclei. And more specifically, rostrally, the VA and VL are typically grouped together, and they receive information from the motor side of the, of the uh, systems, such as striatum, the substantia nigra, the cerebellum. The more ventral part of the nuclear group receives information from the sensory system. For example, the VP the ventral posterior is separated more uh, further into the VPL and VP uh, ventral posterior lateral, ventral posterior medial, with the medial uh, receiving information from the head and neck sensation, uh, while the lateral, VP lateral, receives information, sensory information from the rest of the body. The ventral anterior nucleus functions to program movement from the basal ganglion. And so intuitively, they need to receive and send information to and from 
the basal ganglia and as and as well as some sort of the motor cortex and so they are typically receives efferent from the from the basal ganglia uh, as well as the premotor cortex and the efferent also goes to the frontal cortex the premotor cortex for initiation and planning of movements quite a lot of the times the va and vl nucleus are grouped together because of their similarities in function the ventrolateral nucleus also functions to coordinate and plan movement and they the va and vl nucleus have both have pathways leading to the basal ganglia, the substantia nigra, and the motor cortex. The difference between the two is that the ventral anterior usually projects to premotor cortex, whereas the ventral lateral usually motor. And the ventral lateral nucleus also connects to the cerebellum as well as the red nucleus. I've listed here that the ventrolateral nucleus can be further subdivided into two parts, the pars oralis and the pars caudalis. This is not technically very high yield for the exam, but if you have to remember this, the trick is to know that the uh, part oralis O, as in globus pallidus, and, whereas the caudalis is C for contralateral deep cerebellar nuclei. The ventral posterior nucleus is further subdivided into the ventral posterior medial and ventral posterior lateral nuclei. And these are somatosensory relay nuclei that relays information to the primary somatosensory cortex. The VPL, or VP lateral, receives its input from the afferent spinal and uh, spinal thalamic tracts and medial lemniscus, while the ventral posterior medial uh, nucleus receives its input from the afferent trigeminal lemniscus. Again, the VP lateral nucleus has some subgroups and is not very high yield for the exam. The ventral posterior medial nucleus carries sensation of the face and largely innervated by the uh, trigeminal nerve. It also conducts information uh, from the taste function. And so the input for this nucleus comes from the taste center, which is the nucleus solidarius, as well as, as the picture here shows, from the contralateral principal, spinal, uh, principal sensory nucleus, right here, crosses contralaterally, or crosses the midline to the ipsilateral dorsal trigeminal thalamic tract into the, the thalamus. And this carries proprioceptive as well as touch information to the brain. The other part of the uh, nucleus is the contralateral spinal nucleus. It also crosses the midline and carries upwards via the ipsilateral ventral trigeminal tract into the thalamus. And this one carries the pain and temperature sensation. And obviously the output is the primary, primary somatosensory uh, cortex, as well as the gustatory cortex, which is the parietal operculum in area 40, 43. And we'll cover more about the trigeminal nucleus in the brainstem videos. The geniculate bodies are the posterior inferior most portion of the thalamus and sometimes the, the lateral medial geniculate bodies or geniculate nucleus are considered what's called the metathalamus. And we've covered the lateral geniculate nucleus in the visual pathway videos and you can refer to that video for more information.
In terms of the medial geniculate nucleus is involved in the auditory uh, information processing pathway. And we'll cover more of that in information in that video, in the auditory pathway video. But in short, the information comes from the inferior colliculus and travels to the medial geniculate nucleus via the inferior brachium. And eventually the inf information from the medial geniculate body will go into the Herschel's gyrus, which is the auditory cortex of the Brotman area 41 and 42. Now all of the information from the thalamic nuclei goes outside of it into the cortex via four thalamic radiations, namely anterior, posterior, superior, and inferior thalamic radiations. A thalamic radiation refers to fiber pathways in the internal capsule and other parts of the white matter that connects nuclear groups of the thalamus with the cerebral cortex. And based on the anatomical structure, there's anterior, posterior, medial, and lateral. It is not hard to imagine how with the proximity of the thalamus uh, in relation to the internal capsule, uh, how information can very easily be transmitted outside of the thalamus via this pathway. So in terms of the anterior thalamic nucleus, uh, nuclear uh, thalamic radiation, it carries information from the anterior and medial nucleus outside of the thalamus to the uh, prefrontal, to the frontal lobe. And posteriorly, as we talked about in the pulvinar portion, information from the visual pathway will go via a portion of the posterior limb of the internal capsule and travel posteriorly into the occipital visual cortex. And looking at it, from another picture here with the anterior being here and posterior being here, medial and lateral, the superior thalamic radiation goes into the posterior limb of the internal capsule and travels superiorly into the somatosensory cortex. And the inferior thalamic radiation carries auditory information from the um, medial geniculate body via a portion of the internal capsule called the sublentiform. Internal capsule. We will cover more on the internal capsule in the basal ganglia videos. And here is a color-coded summary of the thalamic nuclei and their projections to the cortex. There's a lot of detail in, in this video and the thalamus in general, and it certainly can be very daunting to know them all. But the important thing is to know what each of those general group of nuclei does, and then based on that, make an educated guess on the exam and the general direction. Here's a summary of the different thalamic groups with their principal pathways and functions and their symptoms when a specific nucleus is injured. And I find it very helpful in learning these different uh, thalamic uh, diseases, in particular, for example, in knowing that the ventral posterior uh, nucleus is involved in the relay of the somatosensory group, then a lesion will lead to either thalamic pain syndrome or a contralateral hemianesthesia, etc. Here are my references. Again, I hope you find this helpful, and I will see you next time.